Now, Chip makes funny jokes about me, and he <laughs> says, what do you say about your Christmas presents? Oh, well, you're not explaining it right. <laughs> it's not funny because now I love books, yeah. but when I was little yeah. or even high school, probably mm -hmm. more high school, not little, that there were always books. And then going through college, always books. So for Christmas. For Christmas. And so that she wouldn't even wrap them differently. Oh, it's a book. <laughs> Not try to hide open it. Open it, open it. It's exciting. And, you know, and, and actually, you know, and but I didn't have the revelation I have now. Right. And so, you know, now we're digging up for all these books. Yes. Because uh, they are a lot of uh, treasures. Mm -hmm. Treasures mm -hmm. that God speaks through you. So recently, I can't remember what month it was. What month was that? We went in September. September. Mm -hmm. In September, uh, I had heard about a book. I hadn't read it yet myself, but I'd heard about a book here uh, and she, uh, from a lady in our congregation here, and she gets so excited about the books and our patriot. She's mm -hmm. patriotic, and Lois is her name, and our. And so she said, "Oh, this book, The Indispensable." So I ordered four copies. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find it in any of the bookstores, and I ordered it from Amazon. And so I sent one home to you mm -hmm. and by Kylie. She'd been here making TV. And it's this book, The Indispensables. And uh, on the front of it here, you're going to see a picture of them crossing the Delaware. Not so much George, the guy's rowing George. Yeah, the guy's <laughs> rowing George. Uh, they're the little group called the Indispensables, and they are actually the basis of the United States Navy. Right. you got to think about it. that. And see, Chip was a history teacher mm -hmm. as well, and he loves books now, mm -hmm. and especially books of history books. Mm -hmm. And so I sent it down to him, and I wrote a little uh, note on the index uh, page, and I said, uh, Chip, I know you love, I'm so glad you love to get books for now. presents. Yeah. <laughs> and so he did. He started reading it right away. And I think he liked it. So Willie started to say, hey, you got to get in on yes, this candy. Yes, yeah. Yes. So Candy and, and I together. And so they reading. started reading it together. Mm -hmm. And they found about this group of men who were from Marblehead, Massachusetts, up very far north. And they fished way far north, yeah. off of Nova Scotia, right. off up in the great outer right. banks, they right. called them, I think. Northern yeah. banks. No great northern banks. Mm -hmm. And there there was the best cod in the world. Mm -hmm. yes. And these but men fished difficult. there with their own fishing boats, mm -hmm. but the waters were so treacherous. They were very wealthy. They mm -hmm. became wealthy mm -hmm. because all the whole world wanted this mm -hmm. cod. Right. But you had to uh, fight the waters. Mm -hmm. And they lost, I think you told me. An average of 100 men a year. Out of that town of Marblehead. Mm -hmm. So Chip and Candace read this, mm -hmm. and then Chip's going to go to preach in Boston. Mm -hmm. And so what did you say, Candace? Well, we were reading it, and, and the spirit that comes behind these men in this book, it's like you, you grab a hold of it. And I t told Chip, I said, I don't care if Marblehead, Massachusetts, is all the way across Massachusetts, we're going. And so we got online, looked it up, and it was 15 minutes outside of Boston. 15 miles. Or 15 miles. Yeah. yeah, 15 miles. Which we thought was 15 minutes no. being from Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, not. it was an hour and a half it's away. Hour so hour. they went there, and yes. you saw John Glover, who's the leader. Yes. You went in his house. Yeah. You called yeah. me. Yeah. You said, Mom, you know where I'm at? That's where I'm, I'm at. I'm in John Glover's house. Yeah. Candace is in the basement. I'm right here. Most Americans don't even know who John Glover is. No. And he was the one who led that expedition that rode oh. Washington across the Delaware. And they, and yeah, go Washington ahead. recruited them. He yes. heard about them through Adams. Yes. He recruited them. He wanted their bravery and their cur their courage. Yes. Because he knew that if they could handle those waters that nobody else would do, he they could handle what he needed on a frozen midnight in the middle of the night right. to do this job. And I thought, wow. The, and he even quoted, they're the toughest men that he's ever been around. Mm -hmm. And it eventually started our Navy, started our uh, Secret Service, yeah. started a whole bunch of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. They and, took their um, fishing boats and, and, and changed them over to warships. Mm -hmm. The first one was the Hannah. And now they, they're talking about, we're talking about Just David fishermen. and Goliath. They were yes. fishermen. Yeah, yes. they were fishermen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking David and Goliath because what was the Goliath? Yeah. The British Royal Navy right, ruled exactly. the seas around right. the world. Right. And they're camped there in the Boston Harbor. Mm -hmm. They have taken over Boston. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so here they come with their first little ship was named Hannah. And they, they boarded out and mounted guns mm -hmm. and audaciously came up against this. <laughs> and, of course, they got whipped right, to there right. at the first. But right. they made great strides. And uh, I, I, here is a, uh, a town near their uh, port was a place named Beverly. Mm-hmm. And it said, um, Reed suggested a flag for the vessels. He's one of the Marbleheaders. 
What do you think of a flag with a white ground, a tree in the middle, mm. and the motto, appeal to heaven? Mm. George Washington loved it. And yeah. so people associate this appeal to heaven flag with him. With George but Washington. even that flag came from, from the, the marble headers. And that's a flag they flew on their ships. Ah. Now, um, it came to the time, I'm going to read you some from here. It came to the time when they needed to cross the Delaware. I'm telling you, folks. We're in a time. We're in a time. time. Yeah, and I want everybody to know right now that you're not just getting a history lesson here. No. We were sent on a mission Mm -hmm. to pray that spirit back into the body of Christ. Yes. Because we're in a time. You even went to the the graveyard. Yes. Yes. I think we got We're in a time yes. similar we to where they all were, Mom. The graveyard and prayed. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and you went to that cemetery and you prayed at their graves and right. you prayed. You were led. Kenneth right. is a prayer, and you were led to pray that down. Yes. That's how we get awakenings. Yes. We pray yes. them in yes. Yes. to God. Yes. So and here it was strong. Here, here oh, I'm yes. going to be reading you your history lesson. Chip was a history teacher, <laughs> by the way, besides being a coach. So he loves these things. Mm-hmm. But so this is a, a chapter called the crossing. And, of course, that's the Delaware here Mm -hmm. with the ice and all that. Mm -hmm. we got pictures of this for them to see. You need not be troubled about that, General. My boys can handle that. (laughs) John Glover Mm -hmm. laconically assured Washington that the Marblehead Regiment could do the near impossible. Mm. The commander-in-chief had asked Glover whether it was even imaginable that the plan would succeed to row across Mm -hmm. the Delaware. Assured by Glover... Washington and Henry Knox were relying on the Marblehead Regiment. They were called the Regiment. Mm -hmm. We had the Black Robed Regiment. Mm -hmm. Now we got the Marblehead Regiment. Mm -hmm. All throughout time. Yeah, well. The Marblehead Regiment could do something even more challenging than their previous feats, which are in the book. (laughs) They could cross a nearly 1,000-foot-wide ice-choked river Mm -hmm. at night, (laughs) unbeknownst to them, at the time of the crossing, there would be a raging nor'easter storm. Mm. Mm. How about that? Hallelujah. So a lot would, of reasons why that they could not back to out. be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, these, these, these troops that they needed to get across, mm-hmm. Washington's troops, some of them have tied old rags around their feet. Mm. Others are barefoot. But I've not heard a man complain. They are ready to suffer any hardship rather than give up their liberty. That's a person wrote it at the time, Mm -hmm. recalled one officer. They shivered, blew on their hands, and stomped their feet to stay warm. Wearing threadbare tattered uniforms and other bits of clothing, some of them swaddled in lice-infected blankets. The army clambered into the boats. General Washington led the column of approximately 2,400 men. As they neared McConkie's Ferry, he ordered a halt, rode a few more feet in front of them, wheeled his horse, and stood up in his stirrups. The commander-in-chief then, quote, one Continental soldier wrote this, he made us such an animating speech that we forgot the cold, Mm. the hunger, and the toil under which we were ready to sink, and each man seemed only to be anxious for the onset. With muscle straining, the Marbleheaders began the laborious process of transporting the small groups of men across the hazardous river. No one knows exactly how many vessels under the the Patriots had at their disposal, but the best estimates are that the group at McConkley's Ferry used four ferry boats and between 16 and 25 Durhams. The Durhams were a funny little boat, explains Mm -hmm. what they were like in here. The floating ice in the river made the labor almost incredible, recalled Knox. Conditions grew worse around 10 p.m. when a severe storm descended upon the crossing and high winds carrying sleet and snow whipped the boats and the men. With his trademark booming voice, Knox yelled loudly enough to be heard among the roaring wind, encouraged the men to press on. The force of the current, the sharpness of the frost, the darkness of the night, And a high wind rendered the passage of the river extremely Mm. difficult. Some of the marble hitters Knox encouraged included the father and son pair, Captain Thomas Grant and his Pfeiffer son. Thomas Grant Jr., the young Pfeiffer, 
was only 15 years old. Mm -hmm. The Marbleheaders put their bodies, hardened by years of experience at the sea, to the test. Knox remembered perseverance accomplished what at first seemed impossible. Experienced officers led the indefatigable Marblehead Mariners. Captains William Curtis, Nathaniel Bond, I'm going to read their names because they deserve it. Mm -hmm. John Glover Jr., Thomas Fosdick, and Lieutenants William Hawks, Edward Archibald, Joshua Orne, and expert swordsman Robert Warmstead captained the boats that fought through the treacherous waters. Mm -hmm. These men had known each other for years before the war and were tied together Mm -hmm. by bonds of brotherhood and family. Mm -hmm. And you stated, we were talking about it yesterday. Unity. They had unity. Unity. They had worked together on the fishing Mm -hmm. boats. Mm -hmm. War had forged their leadership Mm -hmm. and honed their skills for a crucial inflection point where success or failure rested on brawny sea-scarred soldiers. Mm -hmm. These were the right men at the right time in Mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. And I've got down here in my margin, we are the right people at the right Right time. time Hallelujah. Much time was spent waiting and freezing that night on both the Pennsylvania and the New York side of the river. They had to go back and forth. Mm -hmm. They got to get 2,400 men across. Pfeiffer John Greenwood wrote, quote, I was the first that crossed. We had to wait for the rest. And so began to pull down the fences and make fires to warm ourselves for the storm was increasing rapidly. Before midnight, the storm became much worse and the men began to fear the very real possibility they could freeze to death. Mm. After a while, it rained. This is him writing again. Hail, snowed and froze. (laughs) And at the same time, blew a perfect hurricane so much so that I perfectly recollect after putting the rails on to burn the wind and the fire that would cut them into in a moment. And when I turned my face toward the fire, my back would be freezing. By turning round and around, I kept myself from perishing before the large bonfire. They were the group that got Mm -hmm. there first and were Mm -hmm. waiting on the others. If the storm made waiting on the banks uncomfortable, it made crossing the river extremely hazardous. In a testament to the Marbleheaders, Mariner's skill, not one man died Mm -mm. in the crossing. Several African-American members of the Marblehead Regiment uh, and also Native American members. One black soldier recalled the night on his 100th birthday, quote, he wrote, His eyes brightened at the name of George Washington. Mm. At some point during the night, no one knows exactly when, Washington himself made the dangerous trip across the river. Rowing rowing Washington's boat was 21-year-old Marbleheader, Private John Rhodes Russell. With the storm continuing to rage, then they had to make a nine-mile march to Trenton, (laughs) where the Hessian soldiers were. And it was nearly as hazardous as the crossing had been. Many of our poor soldiers, wrote one officer, were barefoot, almost barefoot, ill-clad. Their route was easily traced as there was a little snow on the ground which tinged here and there with blood from the feet of the men who wore broken shoes. During the whole night, it alternately hailed, rained, snowed, and blew tremendously. I recollect very well that at one, well, at one time when we halted on the road, I sat down on a stump and was so benumbed, I wanted to go to sleep. But someone passing by noticed him and urged him awake so that he wouldn't freeze to death on that stump. Uh, the noise of the soldiers coming over and clearing away the ice, the rattling of the cannon wheels on the frozen ground, the cheerfulness of my fellow comrades, one man wrote, encouraged me the man on the stump, Mm, mm. to go beyond expression. And the big coward, as I acknowledge myself to be, I felt great pleasure. He got up off the stump and he lived. Of course, then they're going to go on to Trenton and the tide is going to turn for the whole Revolutionary War. They take the Trenton Bridge without any uh, commands or orders to do so. They just saw that it was available Mm -hmm. and went ahead and took it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an order from Washington or anybody. They just went ahead and took it. It's there. Right. Let's take right. it. The now, here, now, here's what you have to think about. They were what? All, All in. in. Yeah. Mom, I've got now, a question. Now, from this, you got your, your messages from heaven that God's been giving Do you. Do we have right. the same spirit now? in God's people in the church now Mm. for God to do and carry out his plan that he needs to carry out 
Does he have that same spirit in the people? Because God's got people. And all throughout history, God uses people. Mm -hmm. But he uses people who are all in. Right. And they have that courage and they have that, that no fear of faith. I mean, think about it. What were the things they had? Willing to work together. Mm -hmm. Willing unity. to work together yeah. in unity. Mm -hmm. Does he have that now to do what he needs to do? Does he have a people who are no more excuses and are willing to do whatever it takes and don't have a fear of death? Mm -hmm. So all of these things, they had many reasons why not to carry out the plan. But they had this right. spirit in them. Therefore, God could use them. God had pastors. God had uh, preachers uh, called what, Mom? The Black Robe Regiment. Regiment. These and, are and, regiments. And one commander of the British, uh, high commander of the British, oh, yes. said I this. He book. said, if it, if it wasn't for those yeah, bloody black book. coats, there would have never been a revolution. <laughs> they wouldn't have won. They wouldn't yeah. have won. Yeah. And, and they would preach with guns in their hands. And I'm just telling you, we're at a place right now mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I, there's a verse where Paul had this vision and Jesus came and saw, and he said to him, don't be afraid, keep on speaking. And he said, because I have people. God's got people. Right. He's got right. people. Right. You're his people. We're his people. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about all in people. Mm -hmm. The people I can help you with, Paul, are all in. Mm -hmm. He wasn't mm -hmm. talking about halfway in people that, I, that, that Jesus was talking about in that vision to Paul. Right. Paul didn't even know who the people were. Right. Nobody knew who the Marbleheaders were in Washington. Mm -mm. Nobody knew them. He had heard about them. But man, did was they Was it Samuel ever... Adams or John Adams? Oh, Mama, I think one it of was. Them, yeah. yeah, it was one of them. It could have been John. It could have been remember. Samuel. I don't know. I'll look that up. But <clears throat> he, he tells Washington. Washington hears about them. He goes, that's who I need. Mm -hmm. I need that spirit. I need somebody on the water and mm -hmm. I need that spirit in them. That won't quit. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. will fight. Mm -hmm. And love not their life to the death. Right. There you go. That's the key. You see? Yeah. Is, isn't that yeah. an important part of that verse? Yes. Absolutely <laughs> is. But we always quote we always the blood. Quote, yeah. And yeah. They overcame him, Satan, by the blood, blood of, the of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And, and they, they love not, not their lives, lives to the death. Mm -hmm. That fear of death. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah, it, and, 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 and and fear of losing your own life, your own way of doing things. we got to get over that. I'm going to show a picture. I didn't bring it with me today, but I'm going to have them put it in in post. And it's a picture. Now, here's the thing I want to bring out. God can want something to happen. He right. wanted the United States of America to be born. Right. right. Without right. one doubt. Right. Right. He put it in the preachers. Part he of put the plan. it in George Part of the Whitfield. Plan. He put it in the black robed regiment. But somebody's got to cross the Delaware. Yes. Right. Somebody got to get in the ship and risk right. their lives. Absolutely. Right. Now he promised and he he prophesied all through the Old Testament. I'm going to scatter the Jews. They disobeyed me. Mm -hmm. But in the end, I'm going to bring them home. Mm -hmm. But he had to get some people to come home. And I'm going to show a picture. I have got it in my photo file at home, and I'll have them put it in a post. And it's four women coming out of the death camps. Mm. They're standing side by side. They've been in the death camps. They've been in Auschwitz and Bergen, wh whichever ones they were in. And on the same picture, it shows their granddaughters dressed as Israeli soldiers. Mm. Beautiful. Those, and when those people got out of those death camps and they came to Israel, they put a gun in their hands. Mm -hmm. They got to fight out. Okay, Israel's reborn. It's mm. God's will. 1948. Now fight. Now they just got out of, they just got defeated. The Nazis only got defeated in 1945. And they come out of those death camps or maybe they've been over in that place that they've been holding them on, Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And they get off and they give them a, a gun. Mm -hmm. And they say, you're in the army now. And here they've been attacked by five Arab nations just after they declared that they're going to be reborn. God said you're going to be reborn. They get attacked the next day by five huge Arab armies and who wins? It's David. Right. And uh, it, it's just such a picture. I, I want you to see it. But see, even though God said they're coming back, they still got to fight the War of Independence, 1948. They still got to fight the Six-Day War, and they've got to get back mm -hmm. Jerusalem because Jesus said they're going to get back Jerusalem. Right. So he wants these things for us. Why didn't he just... Make it happen. Well, there's all kind of legalities, which has to do with uh, Adam turning over the things to Satan on mm -hmm. the earth, him turning over yeah. authority, things like right. that. Right, very legal. But he needs people. He needs people right now. Why doesn't he just send an awakening? Right. I don't know, but he doesn't. No. And they got an awakening. I wrote a book about it, first of all, in the awakenings. When God told me 
2008, right in this room. This room is also our chapel. Mm -hmm. And sitting right back over there, 2008, we're praying about uh, the election, an upcoming election. And God says to me, he comes down on me like a blanket. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the time, the Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophets. But twice in my life, it's like, if you don't open your mouth and say these words, you are going to die on the spot. (laughs) And so what he said, and I, I wrote it in here was, One thing will save America, and it is not the election. It is an awakening to God. Mm -hmm. One thing will avail for Israel and the nations. It is an awakening to God. Mm -hmm. And then it went through my head, these thoughts, real fast. The best person in the world could be elected president. It would do no good if the people did not awaken to God. Awakenings, history, American history, the part of prayer in the awakenings, study. Hmm. And so I started studying. Now, what I studied and learned, I put in this book, Chip, Washington Stuff. followed the awakening. Right. Mm-hmm. The awakening, the war for the revolution followed the awakening. Mm. Right. Now, see, when the pilgrims came, the Puritans came, they were awake. That's why they came. Mm. But a hundred years later, to, be a, to need an awakening, you've got to either be dead or asleep. Mm-hmm. hundred years later, all kinds of things have happened. The country's expanded. Uh, they're not so close together mm-hmm. anymore. And it was, a, it was a godless society in a, in a big, big way. And then God sent the preachers. But in answer to prayer, mm-hmm. people who had seen and known, like Jonathan Edwards, right. he, was a, he was of Puritan heritage. Mm-hmm. He saw what was happening. And even, even the, the, the local governments would call for fasting and prayer. Mm-hmm. And the people fasted and prayed and God sent an awakening. Mm-hmm. And he sent it not through politicians, no. He sent it through preachers. Mm. Right. He sent it through uh, George Whitfield. Mm-hmm. He sent it through the black robed regiment. Mm. That black robed regiment, like you said, Chip. Um, and all these people he sent it through were all in. They were them. all in. Were what all about in. Whitfield? There were all kinds. Of, I mean, think about the stories of Whitfield on the, the weather and on oh, horseback. And, but, but there were reasons and excuses of to, to quit yes. or to burn yeah. out. Yeah. Or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, he was all in. He was all and in. And in the presence of God, there's, it's impossible to be burned out mm-hmm. or to quit a- and right. they did or it. to be bored. And then therefore, the politicians <laughs> and the fighters and the soldiers could come along. Right. But each group has got to be all in. Hmm. The ones that pray it in. Huh. Right. The ones that preach it in. It's yes. time for the all in. The one that fights the battles. Yes. So then that's why God started giving you all in messages. Right. And you've preached yes. four of them. We're offering it at the end. We'll tell you how to get it. And you're, we're also offering this book right. at the end. Great book. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need this book. And, and you can be inspired. Yes. We also have online, first of all, in the awakenings. Mm-hmm. That will inspire you too. That will. Bless the Lord. Excellent. But but uh, you, had, you, and, you and Candace had sought God and, and then On you went there. You heaven. went to yeah. Marblehead. Marblehead. We went. Yes. And when you saw it, what happened to you? Oh, it was just, just a, anointing. an anointing there. And, and, yeah. and we're even talking to merchants there who didn't know anything about it. They didn't know yeah. what We went there? to the local museum and they said, the lady goes, you must have got a hold of that book, Indispensables, which isn't out yet. They didn't even have it. Right. So even the people who live in Marblehead don't know about this. No, and we, were, we, we had two or three groups in town telling them about it. And they're going, we're getting ch- goosebumps. Yeah. And they go, is that why everything's named Glover, Glover Elementary, Glover Street, Glover this? And I go, yes. He's Praise the, one, the Lord. He's the one who rode Washington over. I think we're out of here. We'll be right back. Shalom. And here I've got right before me this special offer that we're giving you, which you need. The book, which is uh, sold in bookstores for $28, uh, we're going to offer it to you for 22 in 2022. $22 for this book. And then here are the four messages that God downloaded uh, to Chip after he was inspired by this book, after they made the trip to the Marbleheaders. He was inspired, and God, I tell you that first time he came back, Chip, he cried all the way to church. Mm-hmm. He <laughs> cried and couldn't do the announcements. Because the anointing. Yeah. The anointing. Uh, I don't cry at bad news. I'll just stand there. But the anointing, oh my. He cried. He could barely deliver the sermon, the first one. Is that the one that's on here? Mm, uh, I don't think so. 
I don't know. But anyway, there are four sermons in here, four teachings that he gave at the Glorious Church Fellowship where they're pastoring. Mm -hmm. And they're on CDs or you can get them on MP3s, all the modern ways of getting things. (laughs) And then, um, of course, the book, The Indispensables by Patrick K. O'Donnell. And either you can order them separately, bless the Lord, or you can order both of them, uh, 1-800-972-3447, or we like snail mail, Post Office Box 40, Branson, <laughs> Missouri. Send me a note in there, and we'll be glad to get it. So um, we're going to be going on. You won't want to miss the next thing you need to sell out to next week, the love of God. Mm-hmm. I'm going to share about that, and then chip. Is going to light your fires <laughs> the last two weeks of this month. Bless the Lord with burning your past and the bridges behind you. Shalom, and we'll be back next week. <laughs>